So it is a uh, space filling curve. So here is how it works. So, so okay, we'll start with order one. That's just this curve here. Okay, so it's gonna be easier to draw a grid on it once we start doing more. Like this, so I'm gonna draw a little grid. This is not, the blue is not actually part of the curve, it's just grid. Okay, then we're gonna do order two. It's the same two by two grid as before, but subdivided into subdivide each of the other grids into another 4x4 four four grid. 2x2 two two grid. So we have this sort of 4x4 four four grid. Now we're going to put the order 1, which was, remember, this one, in each of the 2x2 two two grids. So we're going to have this one and this one. Now, in these, we're going to do a vert, in this one, we're actually going to flip it vertical. we're going to flip it around this axis. So we get this. And here, we're going to flip it around this axis. Or maybe it's the other way around, I'm not sure which one. <laughs> and finally, we're connecting them up. So we're going to do this, this, and this. Okay, this is our order two curve. Let's draw it uh, beyond this grid. So you can see this is rectilinear, so it's quite easy to draw. So this is the order two curve. Now for order- It's like a cartoon figure. <laughs> if you add like eyes and nose. Now for order three, we're gonna basically do the same thing as we did with order two. So, so we're gonna do this, but we're gonna instead of but instead of putting order one Hil Hil Hilbert curves, pseudo Hilbert curves actually. So because they're not really, let's give it a try. So we have in so order three is gonna be this big one. Order two is gonna go in each of these four. Then we're going to subdivide each of these into four. So order one Hilbert curve is going to go in each of these 16 squares. And then a point is going to go in each of these, what will now be, I think, 64 squares. Uh, I don't know, we might speed this up in the edit. This is like when you draw out a tic tac tic tac toe toe board. <laughs> Go watch a tic the our tic tac tic tac toe toe video. Um, uh, let's learn more about that. But we're gonna but we're gonna stick to the Hilbert curve now. Uh, I think I'm done. So, so this is the grid. <laughs> so we're gonna put uh, this one in each of these four. Oh, okay, that's that's I think. So let's start with the easiest one. And then and then this one is easy, it's just uh, another copy of this one, so I'm gonna do this. Wait! Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully that, that's clear. Now we're gonna have to do this one. So I think we're gonna have to rotate it. Oh, no, I have to rotate the other way. Yes, I do. And then draw out one of those. And then this one is easy. It's just the reflection of this one. Finally, we need to connect all these up, which I think is easy. You just do this, just do this, and do this. Ignore that line. <laughs> um, 
And now this is the curve. Can you turn it again? Which should look precisely like this. So this is order three. With order one, two, hmm. let's go to a mirror. <laughs> Order three, order four, I think this is order five. Uh, the first five orders stacked on top of each other. So that should be um, the first five uh, uh, iterations of the Hilbert curve stacked on top of each other. So the last one of which should look something like this. <laughs> um, by the way, something cool happens when I get to nine because it's six. Seven, eight, nine. You can see it fills up the entirety of the campus. <laughs> that looks majestic. It's an artwork. Yes. So you meant to do this as a coding trend challenge, right? But you wrote the code in your own way. Yes. I used a recursive algorithm. Uh, uh, Dan used uh, an iterative algorithm, uh, which uses like binary numbers, and uh, which means if I were to do another base, I would have to do some sort of like, I don't know. I, I would have to. If I were to do uh, other space filling curves like the piano curve, I, I, I would have to, you know, switch to ternary and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, so, so just less flexible than the recursive method I've come up with. Oh wait, I, I have this. Let's, let's bring this back down again. Um, and you want to add something else to it, right? You said that you want to make it. Um, more interactive. In yeah, I want to. I want to uh, uh, the the user to be able to, to come up with their own space filling curve. So I managed to get the Z order curve working. <laughs> so, um, so I added these uh, rotation instructions. So uh, here's what they mean. So dot means do nothing. Uh, a, uh, an arc of a circle means uh, rotate. And a dashed line means flip. Now, if I click in any of these, it's going to change the uh, rotation instruction. So <laughs> you can see this is kind of kind of cool here. But if I change the C pattern to one, two, three, four, you can see that's the Z order. Curve. Oh my God, that's the Z curve. <gasps> so the Z order curve, and and then and then this is some of the code. That's a lot of code. Just to. And you just came up with this. Yeah. By the way, I'm not actually checked if the rotations work. Um, so I'm going to actually just uh, do that live. So I'm going to reset this. Let's go to order two. Let's change these all to dots. Wait, I, I haven't. Yeah. So do the rotations work? Yeah, looks like they do. Whew. So it looks like my math has worked out. Because there's a lot of math? Yes. <laughs> Show me the math. Oh, this is what she used? Ignore um, this. The drawing, only the formulas. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing that I need to 
do right now is be able to do the is be able to change the uh, particular size of the grid that I'm using. Right now, I'm always using the two by two, but but I and right now I can't set it up so that it's a three by three or even a four by four. <laughs> um, so. So I want to do that so that I can get some more curves going, like for example, this particular uh, curve called the piano curve, which is the original space failing curve. Two things happen. One, I added some, uh, um, some uh, UI? UX. UX. <laughs> uh, um, and then I added this grid feature. So what I so if so I added this checkbox that if you check it, oh wait, it should it shouldn't say order. It should say uh, grid size. If I check it, it becomes a three by three grid. Aha. Uh -huh. And the default is a piano curve. So that so it defaults. So for the two two. For the two by two, the default is a Hilbert curve, and for the three by three, the default is a piano curve. So, so I'm gonna slide this to two, three, four, five. You see, already with six, get this pattern. Nice. It's actually one continuous curve. What's amazing is if I uncheck this, there was the Hilbert curve of order six. Order nine Hilbert curve looks like this. So now I'm going to clean up, clean, well, this up. <laughs> and then you're done. Yeah, and then I'm done. And then I also need to add the documentation for for the for the grid size. And then I will. Are you done? So I've documented the piano curve. By the way, this is how you spell piano. <laughs> With an e. Also, if you go to uh, check this box to get the piano curve, uh, you actually get a nicer, uh, well, it's, it's still pretty ugly, but not as ugly as before. You can see this arc here. Nice. So how many lines of codes is it in total? So, of code is it in total? Uh, 207. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> this looks wicked, though. <laughs> so now you can upload it. I can upload it to the freaking coding train! To the coding train! <laughs> Yay!